Well, good morning. You're watching Morning at NTV and time to take note. Now, the PS and the Ministry of Finance, uh, Keith Mohakani, said uh, in terms of the work of the Trade and Development Bank that perhaps it's very important for economic growth to scale up finance resources in the region and to discuss just what they do and what is happening here in Uganda. The Trade and Development Bank President, uh, Mr. Admasu Tadese. Good morning. Good morning. So, I wonder where we start from. You've uh, just completed, what, a five five-year corporate plan and you're heading into a new plan. So in terms of um, what was part of the, the rebranding, if I could say, you said it was uh, in terms of diversification, growth and innovation. So I wonder if we could just maybe break down each one. Uh, in terms of growth, where were you heading and then diversification and then eventually into innovation? Well, you know, we, we live in a continent, as you know, that is growing, that yes. has huge needs in mm. various developmental sectors. Yeah. So when we started our five-year plan some six years ago, we asked ourselves the question as to whether we are doing enough. Okay. And we said to ourselves, we are covering close to 18 economies at the time. Mm -hmm. And we said to ourselves, maybe we should uh, change gears and catch the, the rising Africa narrative and make sure that we are better placed to, to provide the firepower that's needed. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we came up with a growth strategy. We came up with an innovation strategy. Yeah. And then we uh, started to implement. And so the growth had many dimensions to it. One was, of course, growing our loan assets. Mm -hmm. uh, growing our assets, of course, meant, by, meant, meant increasing financing to various sectors of our region. Mm -hmm. So we looked at infrastructure, we looked at industry, we looked at manufacturing, we looked at agribusiness, we looked at s selected social sectors. But then we asked ourselves a very hard question. We said, well, what does it take to raise the funding that the yeah. region needs? And we, we, we realized that the, the answer was quite simple. Reform. Okay. Reform upgrade the institution, mm -hmm. strengthen the framework, build confidence and allow uh, the, the capital globally, regionally to flow into the bank and then on lend that to various counterparts. If it works, then it works. You know that the <laughs> saying, if you build it, they will come. They will come indeed. Uh, speaking it. of uh, finance, we've got in there funding and I think there was a, a, a talk about how your funding is obviously, is it from your member states? You said 18, now you've grown to a 20? 20 22. 22. Okay, so you have uh, strategic partners. Uh, that's what, you know, you term it as. So there's banks or the bank institutions. Just explain to us in terms of funding how that comes in. Well, you know, the classical model of development finance institutions yeah. has always been to raise money from governments. Yes. But we know that long-term capital, well, governments <laughs> have, have money, yeah. but they have, they have huge pressures mm -hmm. in terms of competing demands on limited financial resources. Yeah. We've always known that a lot of the money actually sits in, in the institutional sector. Yeah. It's pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, insurance mm -hmm. companies, and, and, and other kinds of uh, private financial institutions like mm -hmm. foundations. You know, just if you look at the, the, the world community of foundations, you have massive foundations yeah. that support universities, that, that, that support other initiatives. We all know about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. There's mm -hmm. so many foundations that are sitting with huge, huge amounts of mm -hmm. capital. So that's just the whole uh, spectrum of institutional capital that most development finance institutions have not managed to tap. But with um, institutional, that kind of capital comes with, for example, Belinda and Melinda Gates are very vested in, yeah, education, but a lot of health. So does that mean that when it comes in, it's then directed towards specific goal? Well, you know, that specific foundation, of course, we don't mm. see as a target for yeah. ourselves. Uh, but the point was just to say there's so much capital mm. out there sitting in the institutional sector. That can be tapped in. That can be tapped into. Our particular strategy has been to reach out to pension funds, yeah. insurance companies, sovereign mm. wealth funds. So here in Uganda, we managed to, to bring NSSF on board as one of our significant institutional shareholders, along with several other pension funds from Mauritius, from Seychelles, from mm -hmm. Rwanda. Uh, and then, of course, uh, last year we had the, the OPEC Fund for International Development join us as a new institutional investor. We have the African Development Bank as an institutional very shareholder. Mm. So we have a very nice mix. And uh, five years ago, we, we hardly had any. Today, we're sitting at over 12 oh, okay. new institutional investors in the bank. 
and, and so really it's been a, a fascinating uh, journey for us in the sense that you know, you, you come up with a bold strategy and in the beginning you don't think it's going to happen because it seems like a far shot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as again, as I said, sometimes if you give it all you've got and you, you get the support from the key stakeholders, yeah. it happens. And performance is king. Definitely. Because it's all about that. If you can show people that you're serious, you're disciplined, and you, you can result, deliver again. sustained performance, mm -hmm. The world opens up to you. So 2012 to 2017, that was the last um, part of the plan. If you were to rate at a 10, say, and perhaps you can give us why you'd rate it highly, which I'm sure you're going to do, um, the performance of the last plan, how would you rate it, 1 to 10? Well, you know, um, <laughs> ratings are sometimes objective or mm -hmm. subjective, it's depending subjective, on yeah. what your objective is. When we started out, we, we had a balance sheet of about a billion just over a billion dollars. And we said to ourselves, we, we would like to uh, obviously ratchet up and, and grow robustly. Now yeah. growth, you can grow at 5, 10, 15 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, in five years, we managed to take our balance sheet from just over $1 billion to over $5 billion. Mm -hmm. So we basically managed to, to add $4 billion to our balance sheet in five years. We're a 34-year-old institution. Hmm. You know, in about 28 years, we built up a billion, and every year thereafter, we've almost added a added billion. Added another. And are you still looking to that 10 billion in yes. 2022? Yes, you know, that <laughs> is our stretch target. <laughs> yes. And of course, it depends on a number of conditions mm -hmm. that need to be in place for us to mobilize funding because uh, as a bank, you're, yeah. you're really an, inter an intermediary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you need to be able to convince various funders yeah. to place money in the bank because mm -hmm. it's either depositor money at the level of individuals mm -hmm. or it's raising money through capital markets yeah. and bilateral funding relationships. So Uganda is a member state. Um, let's just bring it home for people who are watching to just understand what key projects have been um, supported by the Trade and Development Bank. Well, we've uh, had a very good run here in Uganda and we're very pleased to have Uganda as one of our founding member states. Mm -hmm. So. Uganda has always been strong in the bank. We, we've, had, uh, uh, we've done almost 33 deals in Uganda since oh. inception. Mm -hmm. uh, about 20 of those have been paid off. We mm -hmm. have 13 that are actively now on our books in terms of commitments. Yeah. Uh, but we, of course, have a very robust pipeline. And, mm -hmm. and if you look at what we've committed to and, and done over the previous years, it's roughly half a billion, 448 million dollars that we've injected into, mm -hmm. into Uganda through a combination of project financing, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure financing, or, or trade financing. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, of course, we, we are a much bigger bank. So going forward, you we can do have bigger things. much bigger things. Yeah. So if you look at our pipeline now, we're sitting at a pipeline with uh, close to a billion dollars of new transactions here in Uganda across a range of sectors. I was about to ask, which sectors do you see as um, growing in, or which sectors are, we, agribusiness is big here, definitely, yes. but is that where our strength, you think, is? It's clearly one of the strengths. It, one of, okay. One of the strengths. Uh, of course, uh, our history here in Uganda has had a very strong flavor in terms of agribusiness. Mm. So we've done sugar, we've done flowers, mm -hmm. we've done a number of agribusiness uh, uh, projects, projects that were yeah. generally successful. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Once the infrastructure is up and running, we, we see so much more potential. But we've done industry, we've done manufacturing, mm -hmm. we've done infrastructure. Uh, some of the larger ones that we've done, uh, an example would be Kampala Cement. So Kampala Cement, we, we've put in almost $50 million into that one sp specific project. And it was, of course, um, a big deal for us to put that much, but mm -hmm. we obviously um, had the capacity, and, and, and Uganda has actually performed quite well, the bank. We have a very good relationship mm -hmm. uh, with Uganda as, uh, as a member state, so that gives you confidence. Definitely. And that's why we're happy to bring the annual meetings here. I was about to say, why did you pick us? <laughs> well, you know, we, we've always uh, seen Uganda as a, as a very committed member state. Mm. And, you know, we are the Eastern and Southern African Southern Africa, Trade and yeah. Development Bank. And mm -hmm. so, you know, in, in within our community, there are some countries that, that have always been very active in the bank that have invested in the bank. Uh, so uh, the, the Ministry of Finance has always been very active as a stakeholder. And then you've had institutional investors like NSSF mm -hmm. invest in the bank. Yeah. 
Of course, they didn't do it for charity reasons. They clearly <laughs> doing it not. for <laughs> yeah. investment yes. return purposes, and mm. they've been rewarded quite well. If okay. you were to look at the returns mm. that they've had, they've had uh, in dollar terms uh, average returns of twelve percent per annum over the past mm -hmm. three or so years that they've been a, a member, mm -hmm. an investor in the bank. But you know, again, it's also about making the decision. It's one thing to have good results post facto, but always. When you're making the decision, mm -hmm. there's, there's an element of faith involved, even though you'll do your professional work, you do your homework, but you still have to have faith, confidence. And so Uganda's always had confidence in the bank, mm -hmm. and, and it's really a mutual thing. It's worked so well. So Uganda's been very, uh, very um, good for us in terms of, uh, of an economy in w mm -hmm. in, in, into which to intervene. And then, of course, uh, the various relationships with the private sector has been very strong. Mm -hmm. If you look at our footprint, it's, it's, it's quite, quite diversified across so many sectors. Yeah. You know, I've mentioned Kampala Cement, but UAP Properties is a building. Labernum Properties is another. We've done pharmaceutical uh, plants here. We've done uh, various types of uh, projects in the manufacturing space. Mm -hmm. Almost 10 different projects in manufacturing that we've supported in this country. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing really is key because it actually helps to transform the economy, get that value addition in place, create the jobs. It's much more than a resource play as we know. And that's what the whole continent is asking for, pleading <laughs> for more industrialization, yeah. value addition, mm -hmm. get the young people to work. Mm -hmm. That requires, you know, um, a little bit of, uh, of, of courage to, to, to enter sectors like manufacturing and industry that that has got risks, right? And they need to be managed. Yeah, you're in Eastern, um, Eastern Africa and Southern Africa. That's quite two different. <laughs> I mean, we're on a continent that uh, most of our businesses and sectors sort of alike, but um, our results and our levels are quite different. I wonder how easy or hard, or, you know, where maybe there's an advantage in you being key players in the financing of most of the sectors. I mean. Is there a difference you see? Um, does it serve as a perp, a good thing <laughs> for the economies to be different anyway for you as a bank or not? Well, you know, we've been in a sense fortunate to be in the right part of the continent yes. during this difficult period of the past four or five years. Yeah. If you look at sub-Saharan Africa's growth over mm. the past few years, mm. it's been amongst the worst on record since the turn of the millennium. Mm. We're sitting at 1%, 1 1.5%. One it's mm. been really... Uh, difficult. Uh, but f fortunately for us, Eastern and Southern Africa mm. has continued to grow quite Very robustly, yeah. over 5%. Mm. So the economies that represent our marketplace, if mm. you like, have been growing still quite nicely. So that creates the confidence and the, 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 the capacity for us to raise funding for these growing economies that are yeah. perceived as being fairly diversified. And, and, and able to absorb funding, uh, which is commercial type funding, which is mm -hmm. what we, we, we tend to, to work with mostly. And, and, and that, of course, uh, requires um, confidence because that funding is, is so sensitive to performance. Yeah. So when there's performance, funding flows. When there's no performance, it dries Tough. up. Exactly. So yeah. our region has been doing very <laughs> well. Yeah. And you asked about Southern Africa. Mm. And I think one of the advantages our bank has is we have a fairly diversified marketplace. Mm -hmm. So we have East Africa, we're in Uganda, all the neighbors of Uganda are in. And by the way, South Sudan just joined us I last year. That, yeah. It's our newest member. So we have the six EAC countries. Mm -hmm. But we have a host of countries in Southern Africa. Mozambique just joined us mm -hmm. uh, two years ago. The Kingdom of Swaziland joined us last year. Mm. Madagascar joined us earlier yes. this year. So we, we've got uh, three new member states mm -hmm. in, 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 in regions that are fairly close to Uganda. South Sudan, of course, mm -hmm. is quite important to Uganda. Uh, but then we have Zambia, we have Zimbabwe, we have Malawi, and then we have the Indian Ocean countries, Mauritius, Seychelles, Madagascar, Comoros. And then you go further north, hmm. you have Ethiopia, yeah. you have Sudan, you have Egypt, you have Djibouti. So when, when, you look, when you look at marketplaces, usually you want diversity because one sub-region can do well in a particular year and another can, yeah. can have difficulties. Plus also being close to each other, like East Africa, we're a region that pretty much trades together, our businesses are intertwined, our sectors are intertwined, so it's very useful. And of course regional integration, mm. as you know, is one yes. of our major 
uh, raison d'etre. Mm. So we have a, uh, a mandate to promote uh, integration and that involves uh, the private sector investing mm -hmm. across borders, mm -hmm. us helping them to finance those cross-border expansions that they need to do. Mm. Uh, you can be a cement company, you yeah. can be a trader, you could be um, in the entertainment industry, hotels, where annual meetings are at the Serena. Serena is a regional uh, hotel chain, as we know, but homegrown, yeah. sub-regional. And so, so we also are very passionate about that, that core issue of integration. And these days, of course, now, we're beginning to finally see mm. these, these long-awaited cross-border mega projects yes. come online. Yes, yes. Standard gauge railways, oil pipelines, mm. gas pipelines, significant roads, border posts that are much more modern and mm. that can allow movement of traffic. Between two markets. And these are all sectors we're looking at. Mm. I, I, I don't know if you're aware, but we uh, have just announced our, our, our support to the standard gauge railway in mm -hmm. Tanzania. We're still looking at the details, but in principle we're, we're, we're quite Committed. interested in supporting that mm -hmm. project. Uh, and of course, Tanzania standard gauge railway will, will support the, the, the inner countries of Burundi and Rwanda. Uh, and of course, there's another one coming through Kenya that will also support mm -hmm. uh, the region. Uh, so again, there's, there's a number of projects. And then of course, the most exciting thing these days uh, is the new resource discoveries in our region. Yes. So we know Uganda has oil, we, yes. Kenya <laughs> has oil, mm. Tanzania has so gas. East Africa is going to be very useful. Very interesting. Very and interesting then mining as well, as, well, as mm. we've seen, Tanzania and Kenya have, have discovered some exciting deposits. Uh, so there's a lot to be done. It looks like uh, the next uh, five years are going to be quite interesting for you. You might still stay on the growth, diversification and innovation. It still applies, I guess. Thank you so much, Mr. Admasu Tadesse, President of the Trade and Development Bank. The annual general meeting is what, this week? The annual general meeting is tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes. And that is for the Trade and Development Bank. You can always uh, go online, look at their works and see you know, their footprints throughout uh, Eastern and Southern Africa and all their milestones and achievements. That's it for Morning at 10 TV. Have a good day.